Creating sustainable livelihood through entrepreneurship, the ongoing success story of Papkoso Loan Scheme. Since inception in 2009, the Presidential Amnesty Program, PAP, has recorded massive success. For instance, under the program, thousands of youths have graduated from various higher institutions, while others have acquired life-changing skills. All of these have contributed to the drastic reduction in youth restiveness in the Niger Delta. However, it is an undeniable fact that despite the massive success story, there was still a huge gap left to be filled. This was because thousands of documented ex-agitators still roam the streets in search of white-collar jobs and other opportunities to earn a decent living. Worried by this obvious development, the Interim Administrator, Major General Barry Tariet Ndiomo retired upon his appointment in 2022, identified the gaps. First, it was discovered that the program had derailed considerably from its original plan and therefore had become encumbered. Determined to correct that, Ndiomo instituted a pragmatic approach to redirect the program and make it more viable for the beneficiaries. Today, the impact of his reforms is massively felt across the region and even beyond. When we were here between 2010 to 2015, the Major General Ndiomo, now retired, was the man who provided security and stability for this program as commandant within the military. Today, I know he didn't know that he was going to be interim administrator one day of this same program. And here he is, implementing, executing those legacy projects that we initiated, like the pilot training program, the maritime sea seafarer program, educational scholarship programs, major programs, and he has initiated a cooperative business enterprise program for our people. This amnesty program has been on for a number of years. In those common ports, and in your own wisdom, you thought the thing needs to be good, program needs to be organized for the purpose of particularly creating opportunities for our youth, not necessarily for employment in the same size, but for them to be able to uh, be businessmen, entrepreneurs, and so on. It's a very welcome uh, initiative. When you hear the whole amnesty, everybody was just centered around the 65,000 Naira stipends, you know, that was given to ex-agitators and uh, the, the vendors who have been running contracts in that place. You know, so it was like a recurring decimal, you know, and owing to the the economic realities that we currently find ourselves. Uh, it is no longer news that 65,000 Naira uh, is a paltry sum of money, you know, compared to the harsh economic realities that we have found ourselves. And what is the best alternative is for our people to go into entrepreneurship. With the benefit of hindsight, Ndiomu floated the Presidential Amnesty Program Beneficiaries Cooperative Society Limited, PAPCOSOL, aimed at discouraging the continuous over-dependence on the 65,000 Naira monthly stipends, encourage economic productivity and create sustainable livelihood for ex-agitators and members of impacted communities in the Niger Delta. To ensure that the scheme runs seamlessly and produces the desired result, Ndiomu constituted a management team made up of a board and a management consultant to oversee its operations. A sensitization town hall meeting was held in the different states of the region to guide those willing to apply and obtain the single-digit interest loan. Thereafter, all the necessary paperwork were effected and the loans were disbursed in two tranches. Pakosu, like I always refer to it, it's an alternative livelihood program. Pakosu is responsible 
uh, or has the capacity to be able to maintain the desired peace and security that we will see or we need in the Nigerian states, particularly in the Nigeria Delta region. But when we get our people engaged in productive ventures, as we are identifying them, we're providing them soft loan, providing them business development support services, providing them mentorship services, providing them market linkages, and all of all these things. What happens is that you will be able to solve their basic livelihood issues. So that means that they will not be given to crime. They will not be available for crime. They will not be available for a lot of stuff. Before, when I've not collected a loan, the business was not going through. But with the loan, I was able to buy some materials to do some doors. And the doors are not here. I put them in my shop in some areas. If you want to go there, we go and see the doors I'm producing there. This loan helped me a lot. If I say this loan not helped me, I'm a big lad, don't lie. Actually, this loan helped me a lot to get some materials to do a lot of things, actually. I don't know if you do before, I get to find the machine and different things. Definitely loan helped me a lot. My business was trying, to, it was going down before when the loan called me in, so I just used it to add up to my business. As I can see, I'm having a Smith store now with, with the loan money. Okay, that's what I do. Like a seed planted on a fertile ground, the loan has started germinating, signaling an emerging economic revolution in the Niger Delta. Since I get the loan, as I normally before, if you come to this place, people know they come to this place. But as the loan come, I build this shade. Normally, my customers, like today now, because of the way I do the wood, the customer just come. I see the shade. I like them. Um, get the wood. Now, I call me. Buy some of the wood. So the loan, they really assist us. And I don't get some few customers add ever since the loan come. Before, I used to borrow money from friends, well wishers and the rest. But as soon as the loan came, I don't have to borrow. As you can see, before now, I buy normally buy feeds. <coughs> I buy feeds. As you finish, I go to the market and buy. But now, I used to stock feeds here. As you can see, this is my stop. I bought it 150 bags of feed at a time. A dominant feature in the whole exercise is the unusual determination by the beneficiaries to make a success out of it. Realizing that it is a life-changing opportunity, they are leaving nothing to chance. Most of them, upon receiving the loan, established various small-scale businesses while others went ahead to expand their existing businesses. I've never seen this kind of environment in my life. I'm telling you the truth. I even applied to go to school, but my name did not come out. But when this general in June come into the system, it make me happy. This money I've not seen from Amnesty before. I've seen it as loan and boost up my business. I, I was in the rental business okay. before the money came, so I just added it to the, to my business. So I have an interest on it and at least it's okay by me. Before the scheme came into play, I have I have at least like um, 17 canopy, 17. But right now I have 25, you understand? The chairs, I have about um, about 200 and, 200 and something. Right now I have 400 and something, about five, almost 500. The tables, I have limited tables before. I have just um, less than 20 tables, but now I have 40 something tables. You understand? Uh -huh. The flood, 2000, last year flood came and uh, damaged so, much, so many of my things. So because of the loan that was given to me, I can be able to recover so many things. But I worked with some throughout the process. In fact, even though we seem to have rounded off, all the people that I have mentored from time to time still call me. I didn't even close the WhatsApp group. It's still open. Uh, one reached out to me two days ago. Uh, so from time to time, they reach out to ask questions. The multiplier effect of the loan scheme is very enormous. Aside from stimulating the local economy of the region, it will further curb youth restiveness, crime and criminality, reduce the rate of unemployment as well as the debilitating level of poverty.
I know that I will make more because this is student environment. Even for this bike, for a day, I make, let's say, minus all fuel and uh, uh, tax people, I go home with nothing less than 10,000 Naira each day. Can't you see my jaw? Everywhere is coming out. I'm, I'm doing well. If you interview any of my fellow bike people, they will still testify to you what we are receiving a day. Some days I work 16, 17,000, just like that every day. By day, now 25,000 for within the town. You go transport them, you go pay, you go pay the operator, we go operate them. If now me go bring the operator, now 30,000 by day. So, but if you want come out for inside this this state capital, now 35,000. Then the operator will go day. You go take care of the operator. Then me I go bring the gel to use them. And this now very near they see then a new mixer. 92 again. 92. See, I'm them together. This one, I just drop the loan. As I drop small, my friend, he bring them for me. So the balance and small, small, I complete them. Because now this one be the major money with people, the person people collect. Not what those granite and biscuit, or those one, are, Madame, the house. I mean, I travel, those one people hold the house. But this one, I be the business, the main business for now, as the fund never talked on. A lot of surprises. When I mean put I positive surprises. Uh, getting on the project, I, I didn't really know how much uh, what we had. Uh, but having to get on, I've seen a lot of people that are very serious with their businesses uh, that would actually need more support than is being even offered at the moment. I've seen those sort of persons. Of course, in every group of persons, you have people too that are still far behind, that are just coming to terms with that. But uh, on a large scale, on the broader picture, I think we've been able to see a lot of people that are serious about creating value and uh, creating wealth for themselves. And they need to be guided. But above all, the scheme is gradually creating a new legion of entrepreneurs that will, in the long run, become employers of labor and net contributors to the nation's economy. Suffice to say that it is a new dawn for the Niger Delta. Initially, I did not have a job. I was just selling small things, but I immediately I collected the loan. I be able to I inquire a job, and I bought things, and I'm selling by God's grace. For the loan, the capital that I used to go to market was not that much. So sometimes I used to collect from friends and neighbors. But when I bought the loan, at least it helped me a lot. Actually, it's not still enough to we are still collecting one or two from others to meet up because this business, the materials are very expensive, but it's still, it's still better than before. It's still better than before. The idea of a lot of us being militant without thinking the other way around has naturally brought us backward. And with this initiative of this loan, it really help our militants to have a different think different thinking on how to get yourself involved in entrepreneurial and it's a, it's a good initiative. Narrating their experiences, some of the beneficiaries were very emotional. They now have a sustainable means of livelihood to feed their family and other dependents, promptly pay bills and end the culture of insistent borrowings. To this, they are grateful to the Ndiomu-led presidential amnesty program. Their hope has been renewed they can now live a modest but comfortable life. They can also face the future with great optimism. These are the place where they say, I use for the business for now. With this opportunity, 
I get workers, we do some pot new I give me at least put the see the benefit for me. So they see they pray for others when they say they never see get the opportunity. I they see they pray with this opportunity, make his prayer wish everybody because nobody let me do the struggle. If it is only my will, you will be in until father notice. May God bless you with you more. You use God touch you to change our lives. There is no leader like you. Indeed, you are a leader. You are a God sent one. I appreciate. I'm so grateful. Thank you, I'm Nelson, the coordinator. May God bless him. Thank you very much. I inherited a program that was completely deranged from the objective from which it was established. Since my absorption of office, I have tried my best to reposition the presidential amnesty program. But clearly, it's very difficult to bring about change when people are used to certain ways that deny them of the benefits that have been accruing to them. And so it has been extremely difficult for me. But in spite of that, I have gone ahead to try to reorganize and refocus the program. With concrete plans for the expansion of their businesses, the beneficiaries are asking for more loans after fulfilling the threshold of the initial loan repayment plan. When money the business, business moves. If money not the business, business not gonna move. Like if better money the man not supposed to put engine. Engine. If I vibrate for engine now, I'll get more customer. So all those things I wait I put everything when I then when the same go request for what we want. Even uh, more the way go they lift the material for me. All those things I put about you don't know come but with this one way they give me. The business don't clamp. I lost a lot of beds from years ago. Like two years ago, I lost almost 200 beds because of the flood. So on that note, I, I have to put this thing up with carpenters to help me raise the beds. Whenever the flood is coming, I raise all the beds and put them on top here. It's here I will come and feed them. So please, I need battery cage. Please, I need battery cage to assist me in order for me to be suffering from the flood. As you can see here, here it's already filled up. Uh, if they give me more, then I'll go and go and then stop somewhere. And establish more so that, that's my plan yes i have plan for expansion actually i have some wines inside also and I, I need money to buy more wines and so many other things also to fill the store so that i can able, enable me to also open another store also i have the vision of taking a business branch to sagbama local government where a university is also located so i'm trying to work towards that those who are already doing well, we push them to do better. Those who are nowhere already, we've been able to kickstart them. You know, we hope that, you know, we'll progress, you know, with the mentorship so that they can also begin to do well. The success story of the loan scheme so far is another screaming testament that the negative stereotypes often associated with the Niger Delta are deliberately concocted to demarket the region and her people. The success of the scheme is also proof that a vision backed by a strong will to succeed can be a game changer. Now the interesting thing is, if you are also following through our processes, you allow the mentors access to you, you are talking with them, you are reporting to them, all of all these things, we are also going to open you up to other opportunities beyond the Pakosu funding. We are in touch with the Bank of Industry, we are in touch with Bank of Agri, but we want to see beneficiaries that are ready for engagement. So we want to watch them grow over a period of time before we facilitate these business linkages with them. This loan scheme that uh, General Barry Ndiomu and his team has put together, you know, is a step in the right direction and it is something that every well-meaning stakeholder of the Niger Delta region should applaud because I'm aware that the beneficiaries of this loan, uh, those who understand the importance of entrepreneurship are already making good use of what was given to them. And uh, 
our own is to continue to encourage them that if they want to become self-sufficient and self-reliant, you know, they should not take the loan scheme, you know, uh, for granted. They should put in more effort and see how far they can also add to the GDP of the Niger Delta region. Those who hitherto criticized the establishment of the scheme have now realized that the approach deployed by Ndiomo, which includes enlisting the right personnel to manage it, has prevented the scheme from going in the way of others. Okay, most times, the, most times, uh, beneficiaries feel entitled, but my advice to, to beneficiary, which I'm also a beneficiary, although I've not been paid, but I, I, it's to, to use it for the good of themselves, the good of the region, and good of humanity. You know, so it, it can also encourage other younger ones who are looking up to up to them as a, as and not to undermine the, uh, the efforts being carried out by the by the leadership of PAP. So I think it's it's a it's a step in the right direction. First of all, to wanting to empower people to be self-reliant. For me, that's the most important thing here. When somebody is empowered to be self-reliant, not uh, waiting on arms and sixty-five thousand naira that doesn't even go anywhere. Sixty-five thousand today is nothing. You know, so such loans, if if you, if it will be put to proper use, I, I always will maintain that will will be like a game changer for for the entire region itself. Undoubtedly, initiatives like this has also helped to reduce crude oil theft, pipeline vandalism, and other economic crimes, as well as increase the nation's oil production. This is because those who are usually responsible for such crimes because of idleness are now constructively engaged. As a matter of fact, they are at the forefront protecting Nigeria's critical national assets. It is instructive, therefore, to sustain the initiative and ensure more people are captured in the scheme. Thing you do without proper education, education in terms of information, telling the people orientation and reorientation, it would not stand the test of time. Um, loans have been given in diverse ways, but uh, you know this, most of these loans, you know, end up not being properly utilized. That's because oftentimes those. The recipients of this loan are not well educated enough. Education is not about going to school, but they are not informed enough as to how best they can also use these loans to better the loss of many around them. While advocating for a transition of the PAP into a special social intervention agency that can equally drive development of the region faster, Ndiomu has reiterated his commitment to use his privileged position to do what is right in line with the mandate of his office. This program, to be honest, is very necessary as some kind of intervention program for the Niger Delta. Um, it's just that I'm, I'm not comfortable with this amnesty thing. I think that the name should change. And it should be a direct intervention program from the presidency in the Niger Delta.